everyone else knows so that I'll frame the conversation live when we're on, and we're on right now. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Stuart Carden, the new artistic director of Kansas City Repertory Theater, and you are here with us live with the cast of Legacy Land. Hello, cast of Legacy Land. Hello. Um, <laughs> So, so fortunate to have uh, the cast agree to join us while we've been streaming um, Legacy Land uh, over the last few weeks. And if you haven't seen it yet, you have until tomorrow. Tomorrow is the deadline uh, to be able to watch Legacy Land um, streaming at uh, kcrep.org. And um, this was so fortunate that all of you all were available in game to do a traditional talk back, but in a new medium. So thank you all for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Would you mind um, just sharing uh, your name and where you are and what character you play in Legacy Land? And then we're gonna jump into some questions after that. And at first there'll be about 20 minutes um, uh, where I get to sate my curiosity and ask questions for about 20 minutes. And then we'll open it up to folks that have questions that want to send uh, um, uh, questions in through Facebook Live, and we'll answer some of those for the second half of this. Um, but uh, Marsha, do you mind starting and sharing sure. who you are and where you are and uh, and and who you played in Legacy Land? Hi, I'm Marsha Estelle. I am in Chicago, and I play Barbara. Um, and Sola. Hi, I'm Sola Bamis. I'm in Los Angeles, and I play Denise in Legacy Land. And Alfonso. Hi, my name is Alfonso Walker Jr. I live in New York City, and I play Marcus in Legacy Land. Ansa. Hey, I'm uh, Ansa Chea. He, him, his are my pronouns. Uh, I play Freddie, and I'm currently in Saint Paul, Minnesota. So. Friends, have you all seen each other since we left Kansas City? Yes, virtually. Oh, yeah, virtually. Yeah, I was like, no, not yeah. in person. <laughs> right, but we really miss each other. I but, mean, but virtually, I'm sorry, I should have framed it that yeah, way. Virtual, yeah. Virtually, have you been able to connect? Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. And group chat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, that's great. Well, um, we're gonna, the way we're going to frame this conversation is we will I, undoubtedly because uh, this virus is insidious and the impact has permeated every part of our lives. I'm sure uh, COVID-19 and the impact of uh, the virus and sheltering in place will be a part of this conversation. But our goal is to really talk about legacy land. And if that radiates out into conversations about um, this moment, great. Uh, but our goal is to start uh, and, and really focus on legacy land and have an opportunity um, to reflect on it, uh, especially given um, there were a, a couple audiences that were able to, to see it IRL. And then now there's been a lot of people that have streamed it and viewed it um, uh, on video. And so this is a chance for, for us to have a discussion about legacy land um, and uh, maybe touch on a little bit the impact of of um, the cancellation of the show due to COVID-19 and sheltering in place, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it's really great to see all of your faces and thanks for doing this. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start with a, a, a softball question for you and then we'll get to some hopefully meatier and more complex questions as we go along. But to begin with, you know, uh, it's always a choice when you take a role. It's always a choice. And with a piece like this that, that you know is going to ask um, quite a bit of you uh, uh, to tell the story, you've got to make that decision. So I wondered if each one of you would just talk about why you wanted to tell this story and why this story was important for you to tell. Okay, I'll start. Um, so, I, I can't remember if I received an email first or if I saw uh, one of the casting directors at an opening and said, you know, there's this play, I think you might be a good fit and you, would you like to read it? I can't remember what happened first. But when I read the play, 
I got that, that jump in my tummy that uh, told me this is phenomenal and that it was going to, I knew it was going to challenge me and I like, I love to be challenged. And, but more importantly, I, I thought this story, because I always, I have a saying where I say heal by any means necessary. And so it was just a story of, of what happens to a person that deals with um, abuse and then how they try to shape their world because of that and how the things that work for you as a child do not work for you. So I, I was just, just really afraid and excited, you know, for it, about to play that role. And, and as a person, an older person, we know as for women, those kind of roles are few and far between. I mean, I'm auditioning for the wife that says, honey, you shouldn't do that. You know, so <laughs> to, to explore something like this, comp I mean, she, she was so complicated and her relationships were complicated. And so I, I just knew that I really was interested in playing it, playing her. I felt the same way. That's I saw great. the challenge. So, you want to answer that? Yeah, yeah, I felt the same way. I saw the challenge in the role and I thought that it was something that if I could tackle, that would definitely make me grow as an actor. Yeah. And um, yeah, I really just wanted to do it. And I also wanted to definitely, you know, because the theme is, or, or you know, because of the, one of the topics um, the, the, the themes are so broad and so deep. I also wanted to um, also be an actor who spoke voice to survivors in that way because I felt um, I, 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 I had never done a play like this that spoke to uh, sexual abuse or sexual assault or incest in communities. So I definitely thought that this would be um, a part of just my journey as a performer in doing healing work, you know, so yeah. That's great, and I, I I don't know if you all caught it or not, but I got to talk with Stacy last week. Yes, I saw that, and, and she's remarkable. And um, and uh, one of the things that really resonated for me every time I talked with her about was about this is a story that giving voice uh, to the voiceless and those who had not had their story told and mm -hmm. the duty she felt. Yeah. To give voice to um, uh, to uh, this story and to give honor and dignity and um, amplify uh, uh, um, both uh, Barbara and Denise as a representative of of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of women that she she knows and mm -hmm. women that deserve to be honored through hearing having their stories told. Um, uh, Alfonso or Ansa, do you want to speak to why why you said yes to this and why it was important for you to be a part of telling the story? Oh yeah. Um, honestly, I tell you, it first started when I uh, went to the audition. <laughs> it was like the energy when I walked into the room, like to have the director and the playwright and like you know some of the production team in the room and just how they embraced me and it was just like I was like oh. <laughs> I feel like like I was already in it even before I was in it like you know it gave me the opportunity but then you know you laugh at like the first you know those first pages of the script but then you understand what's behind all of that humor and then you start to realize like oh this is really scary stuff mm -hmm. like we're touching on something that you have never seen and that people don't talk about mm -hmm. but a lot of people go through it mm -hmm. and yeah. once I realized that and I laughed and then I was scared. And I was like, oh, this is gonna, like Marsha says, it's gonna, it's gonna challenge me. I'm gonna mm -hmm. have to go somewhere. I'm really gonna have to be vulnerable and, and, and go to that place because so many of us like have experienced certain things like this and in order to bring awareness to it and to, to bring change and to advocate for it, we have to talk about it and we have to do it. So it's my duty as an artist to mm -hmm. do this kind of work, this, this play, this Stacey Rose piece of art. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and I'm grateful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and I'll just uh, dovetail what uh, Alfonso said. I, I knew uh, Stacy Rose from the Playwright Center here in uh, Minneapolis, and uh, she's just an amazing voice. And I had the pleasure of working on her other play at Barrington Stage. And um, I wasn't able to be a participant in um, the workshops, but I knew Stacy Logan and Stacy uh, Rose. Um, Stacy Logan, sorry, Logan Bond, <laughs> Stacy Rose. Sorry, they're, they're so close sometimes. Um, <laughs> I had worked with both of them before, and they had mentioned this particular play. And so after I read it, I think everything that my other actors. Uh, my fellow actor said, it scared me. It, it made me aware of things that I was also not uh, being invited into having conversations with, uh, in mm -hmm. both personally and professionally. Um, mm -hmm. It's odd also that the way that she has it written, it's all about family. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it, it's really about relationship. It's really about um, how we see each other and how, some, how sometimes we don't see each other. And so I wanted to be in conversation with that uh, personally and professionally. And truth of the matter is, uh, I always wanted to work at Kansas City because <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I want to go. You know, it's really safe about going to another place that you know where you're going to be able to do mm -hmm. the work and not have to, quote unquote, like uh, go home in terms of uh, people that know you and run into them at, at the supermarket when you're dealing with sexual trauma and abuse and family and. So I wanted to work in Kansas City and, and uh, really, really give it a go. Mm -hmm. that, that's great. And um, so uh, just for, for folks that don't have the insider uh, uh, knowledge that we do, Stacy Rose is a playwright and Logan Vaughn is our director for Legacy Land. So who Alfonso was re referencing earlier and, and Anto was just referencing, um, uh, Logan Vaughn is the director of Legacy Land. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I said we'd start a little soft and easy and then transition to some more complex questions. We're going to still be in the soft and easy portion, which is, okay. um, which is what was uh, something in the process that brought you joy in this process? Um, what was something that, that brought you joy either in the process or in the, the um, experience of uh, um, uh, uh, excavating your character? that brought you joy? Uh, from, from day one I, of the process, um, I just felt so safe. And I, from day one, I mean, so, and that is very important for an artist and especially for this difficult play. And then my, when I met each one of the, oh man, castmates, I was just like, they were so sweet, you know? And and um, so just all around, I was like, I'm gonna be able to play. I'm gonna be able to explore. I'm gonna be able to be, go strong and wrong here because <laughs> it was created, you know, from, I, I feel from day one um, and just the way uh, Logan knows how to talk to actors um, how Stacy embraced each one of us and didn't know us, you know, and and the check-in of, of of the stage man, you know, just checking, are you okay? Um, they just, it was always, I always felt safe. And if if something if something was going on with me and I didn't, you know, I'm like, hey, I, I need a minute. It was just no no questions asked. So. But what really brought me joy was that, like, I remember we were all in the car on our way and we were so excited. And then I remember day three, we were like, oh, wow, this is, this is, this is a lot. <laughs> but we felt, we never felt separate. I, I mean, I'm yeah. speaking for myself. I never felt separate from them. Like, we were like, we are on this journey together. And that brought so much joy, including our dance when we would dance. That because I love to dance. And so when we would have our, <laughs> our moments where we would just have music and dance, that, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Nice. That's amazing. Does anybody else want to speak to joy in, in the process? Of, of course. Of joy? Yeah. yeah. Love joy. Well, no, no, honestly, it was meeting each and every one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. We were able to like, just like trust one another, uh, trust one another in play. Like we were like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. We came to like, it was a little, 
communication competition you, and, and, and would you say like you see your other fellow castmates like going there so it's like okay let me try something too I want to go there I want to have some fun like you know that was that's the best part of this you know you, you get to like find these things uh, these little nuances to be able to tell this story to be able to really get people to invest in it and really go along and it's like yeah play so what we do for a living we get to play yeah but we did until I, I have to add, <laughs> I think because it's a new play, which is very different than a, you know, like if we're doing, and this is no knock on any, any other plays that are out there. Uh, if we weren't doing Othello or, you know, Labor's, like it was, it's a new play. So we got the chance to really sit and think about, okay, what what is, and have the living playwright in the room telling us, yeah. you know, run with it, but here, here are some things you want, you want to know, or if you have questions, and that resource having both Logan and Stacy in the room, and you know, you mentioned Kim earlier also with the way that she supported us and, and Moxa for that matter, having those, those kind of questions answered without feeling mm -hmm. like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's holy. No, we can really play and figure it out and ask questions and try things. I mean, yeah. the, the process of it is, to me, I love rehearsal. Me um, too. Because <laughs> you get to, to make mistakes in a way that are discoveries. Yeah. So, you know, there's not an audience there necessarily criticizing you or not criticizing or whatever. You can mm -hmm. just be amongst your, your peers. And that, that's what I really uh, made me happy. Yeah. yeah. I agree with everyone that the joy permeated from early on. And I think even there's so much, interestingly, in the script, even, you know, it's not like right. the kind of joy that, you know, we're going to get into later when you get to the dark stuff. But like, <laughs> There is a levity to that, you know, to, to some of the relationships early on. And so I think having that to explore um, early was really good and really fun because we mm -hmm. could do that and get that out of the way so that when the dark stuff did come, we were like, okay, at least we got all this fun stuff out of the way. <laughs> which we did, which we did. Yeah. Well, well talk, to, talk to me a little bit. Let, let's transition in, into that then. Um, a, a little bit about how humor plays out uh, in the way that the story is told. And perhaps uh, uh, more specifically in the way that that relationship is revealed. You know, a lot of the humor in the piece is really cutting uh, it, it really, uh, the humor um, digs into vulnerabilities and weaknesses of the other characters quite often. So talk to me a little bit about as, as performers and through your characters, how humor, your character both used humor and also sometimes was the victim of humor uh, in the, the course of the, the telling of the story. Oh. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say, uh, I'll say for myself that Marcus, playing Marcus, he had like, he wasn't intentionally wanting to be funny, but like, you know, he had <laughs> sarcasm. It was a bit in there. He did take a lot. He was the victim of a lot of humor on other people's end, you know. Mm -hmm. That there, that alone honestly helped me really see who Marcus was and to feel and to understand like what he was like going through and like why he would subject himself to this and he's so young and he's so like he's naive and he he, he still has hope and it uh mm. it, it, it's it, I remember one day in particular is what I'm talking about is uh Marsha as Barbara she really she was going there and I just Remember, I was like, I, I just started to cry. And I was like, I don't cry here. Mm. Like, I don't, I don't cry here, but it was like, I felt <laughs> it. I understand, I was like, but she yes. was entertaining the room, like, you know, and he was being the blunt of, of all of her jokes. And it was just mm. so painful to know that Marcus is real. He exists in this world. He's really someone, someone is really him. And that day I, I just knew that I was like, this is my duty to like, we gotta tell this story. We gotta tell it not accurately. We have to tell it truthfully. Mm -hmm. We have to tell the truth of this. And it's just like, it just made me feel so much. It just brings up so much for me, even still like, oh, mm -hmm. oh it's just, but that's what we do inside of families and stuff. You know, we, 
we crack these little jokes and we say these hurtful things, but oh, I'm just playing. But like sometimes, sometimes that stuff creeps through and it, it gets mm -hmm. to you. And it's just like, wow, like we have to be conscious and mindful about the words that we choose when we say them out loud, whether it's to other people or to ourselves. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I, I just want to say, uh, so I play Frederick Gaines and I think there's, um, it's a conversation for him about masculinity and uh, what relationship and love or lack thereof look like. Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, it was also <laughs> kind of revealing to see how he related to the person who he's engaged to, his fiance, and then he sees another male in, you know, uh, Alfonso's character in Marcus that he has to challenge um, and where that comes from and what that's about. And then obviously yeah. he's, got, he's got his nemesis right across the room too. So, <laughs> and all that happens in basically in a home. So, you know, that's what I love about what Stacey Rose kind of uh, wrote was it's not in a mall, it's not in a store, it's, it's, it's in somebody's home that was already inhabited by somebody else. So there's all this history that's informed um, when we walk in there. And that, that was part of, I think, Frederick Gaines's kind of like radar, figuring out where the weak spots are, figuring out mm. who you can um, mm. step on just to make mm -hmm. yourself feel a little bit bigger or smaller. And also, you know, I don't, I don't, um, I think there are a lot of those kind of human beings out there in the world. Mm -hmm. And whether you're black, white, or whatever, however you, you identify, I think it's so specific in terms of the way that Stacey Rose wrote it that everyone can see someone that they know. It gets beyond, you know, the descriptors and sees what the dynamics of those who they are. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Frederick Gaines operates like that on relationship, mm -hmm. power dynamics, you know, so that was interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that it just is so remarkable about Stacy's writing of this piece is the characters are so dimensional and the relationships yes are so defined and it jumps off the page and then you all um, in partnership with Logan brought those to even more um, dimensional rich life but they're, they're it's there on the page and mm -hmm. you know I, someone that reads a lot of new plays and one of the things that blew me away in that great feeling that you get from like Tennessee Williams <laughs> is mm -hmm. that that the dialogue and the relationships, um, uh, feel so true and alive and present, and yet plot is still being advanced. The story is still being advanced. Um, and the scene that comes to mind for me, and I talked to Stacey a little bit about this, is the Monopoly scene. And I would love for you all to talk about the Monopoly scene as well. Because <laughs> it, it does all those things. Like it, it advances plot, it reveals character, Mm -hmm. It re re reveals relationship and all the monopoly rules are true too. <laughs> mm -hmm. She said you all helped her figure that out. But yeah. but but talk a little bit about what it's like. I heard from, from Stacy talking about what it was like to write the monopoly scene and that experience, but talk about rehearsing a scene like that. That has boy do we rehearse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, talk, talk a little bit about rehearsing the monopoly scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and your experience of that. I think the first thing we did after we did the table read of it was play it. We just went and straight played it just to see how we played, you know, a bit the game with one another. Mm -hmm. And then um Logan wanted us to incorporate the language and the, the actual active playing of the game with it. And that was when it was like, okay, the start and stop, the start and go back, start, stop. That, that was when like that tension was allowed to be built because not only throughout the game, you had these moments of, I, it's my turn, my, no, it's my turn. You, you, you know, like among us too, we were actually making real mistakes. And mm -hmm. so I think as we were pushing through in order to, you know, just gain momentum, it was just more heightened. And so as we kept going along with it, you know, just, just along the process. And we, we would rehearse outside, I mean, and I mean, not to get a pat on the back for this, but we would obviously rehearse outside of rehearsal, um, you know, where we would stay and we would just play, just like keep going and going and going. So that, that helped a lot in terms of grounding us with that piece, yeah. 
because we wanted to make sure it did all of those things authentically. Yeah, it's very misleading when you read it that you, because you're not doing the actions. Mm -hmm. And once you started rehearsing with the actions, it informs so much of what, what we're saying, when we're saying, how we're saying it. And Logan was a stickler as to, you know, don't uh, don't do like uh, don't don't just run the lines like okay I do this and then that happens like do it with some level of commitment emotionally so that you get the sense of where the movements and the pauses are and the way that I think also Stacy Rose writes um, is very much like Mehmet or August Wilson where it's happening in the light right it's, so you can't really predict it and when it happens it happens. Mm -hmm. We can't discover it. So I think we discovered as we we're playing the game, like, oh, this is where we are and this is where I am. And when I'm going to go get the, the wine and she says that thing to her sister and I don't hear it, all those things happen around the game. So we had to do it with a, a level of commitment, even in rehearsal, so that, uh, you know, Logan was really paying attention to that timing that I think Stacey Rose writes with, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, um, uh, when Marcia, I wrote out, I reached out to you um, about uh, the question of whether we were going to stream the show or not. You wrote back, and uh, and one of the things you said, I'm not going to share everything you said, but one of the things you said was, um, I just don't feel like I'm done with Barbara. Mm -hmm. Because we canceled, uh, for those of you out there, and um, many of you know this, we canceled basically on our opening night. Uh, we had a, a semi-private opening night um, and we canceled and that was our last performance. And so when I wrote to you, uh, you shared, I don't, I just don't feel like I'm done with Barbara. Can you mm -hmm. share what you mean, mean by that? And if anybody else wants to speak to, to that same idea, I would love to hear from you. And then after that, I'm going to open it up to questions from Facebook. But can sure. you tell me what, what that means? To you? I, I, I mean, like everyone, I was brokenhearted, but of course I understood. And I was like, you have to be an adult and, you know, accept it. But one of the great things, of course, about having a run is now you are really into this character and you're learning more about her in the moment. And so to not have that and not have this opportunity to play anymore with these with my the, with the other characters like really I just felt like oh now I'm ready now I'm ready to to really you know explore and and um with with my fellow castmates so I think that it, it was like and she's so complicated you know and I and I and I even I'm like ah you know if when I watch, I'm like, ah, okay, there's something else going on that that I could explore. So I think that that is what I still, I mean, I think all of us, we were so affected by our character. I mean, I even, I, I had an exercise because I also write. I was like, I have to write some kind of scenario with what happens after. And that doesn't, that's just for me. Like, I was like, I have to, where's Barbara working now? You know, what is she, what is she doing? Let's see, what happened to Marcus? What happened to, Fred? you know, I had to explore that because I was not, and, and still not ready to let, let go of her, you know? Yeah, I feel the same way. Like, we were just ready, like, to like, okay, now it's, it's time to really, like, you know, it, it like you said, explore is like we're gonna like find all of these new things and these new ways to interact and like this small home with each other and just how to move around and and it, mm -hmm. it it's just like ah yeah and ah, it's so crazy. I will say also <laughs> because you know the set that Jack McGaw uh, built, it's so tight and there's so many things that we we were just figuring out like literally you know the, ma the mac and cheese uh, getting the food opening the fridge the all these nuances the lighting i mean the, the the sound the radio all those things you know for a while i think we're technically trying to just be uh respectful of okay this is what we agree we're going to try to do as a, as a team and i think there's that thing that when the artistry kicks in where we all know what we're doing and we don't have to think about it Right. We know, we know it and we can just inhabit the set and the timing and the music, like everything. And I think that's the part that is a little, uh, well, it's yeah. not a lot, it's, it's uh, sad. <laughs> There's no other word. Yeah. It's just sad, you know, it feels like yeah. that was um, shortchanged. And also the audience, I think, 
learning how they listen and yes. how they respond mm -hmm. and what they take in and what they don't take in for whatever reason, whatever's going on, uh, is the joy of theater for me. Uh, and that's yeah. what I meant by like, I love the process, but I mean, doing the play is just a gift to the community. And that's the conversation mm -hmm. I really wanted to have. Yeah. 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 And you all were in that early, uh, early moment where you're probably just beginning to get that ability to, to also bring them in and also really listen to them, right? Yeah. We're shifting from being able to, you're holding on white knuckling the journey just with each other and you're beginning to be able to fold them in, um, right? Right when, when we had to, to cancel the run of the show. So I, I'm, I'm sure that part of it is equally frustrating because, yeah. because you were just beginning being able to taste that folding of them, them in. Mm -hmm. So like, you wanna to speak to, to that? Yeah, the same. It's just, it, yeah. it feels like, um, I, and it, it, it's hard to, to find another term. So I hope I'm not trigger word, whatever, but it feels like a stillborn, like something that was almost ready and right before uh -huh. then it had to be frozen in yeah. this state. And, um, and it just wasn't, I don't want to say it wasn't because, because we, it was ready, you know, yeah. like we felt ready, yeah. but, and, and the time was here, everything, it just was like, nah. so, um, yeah, like, like Ansa says, it, it honestly is something that is sad. Um, it, it took a while for it kind of to like settle in on me that. It, it is something that um, is disappointing because of the amount of work that we as actors, I mean, not, not just the work that we put in, but the work that is put on us when we, when we do these roles, you know? Because yeah. the, the idea was that, you know, we did all this work so that throughout the one we would be like, pow, pow, be like letting all of yeah. the like the spidey juice out. And right. now we have all this spidey juice and what are we supposed to do with it? <laughs> right. like, hold on to it. And especially like inside your house, it's just like, you know, there's like, it's like there was so much I just knew I was gonna, yeah. I, you know, just like, just night of Denise. That, because that's, you know, just like performance, that's what it is. And it just was gonna be like, yeah. that, and, is the, that is the best metaphor I've ever heard mm -hmm. what do i do with all this spidey juice when yes. i'm in my house <laughs> right just energetically the really. metaphor for this moment in time <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i was walking through the house and i would just say lines and finally i'd say honey i'm gonna be saying these lines and he's like okay <laughs> i'm just gonna be i was gonna be talking to you like you marcus or or denise i'm just gonna do it and he's like okay you can do that <laughs> i didn't know where to put put it you know <laughs> well, we've got, we've got a few questions, uh, quite a few, and I'm going to just be selective of this. Um, quite a few questions from Facebook. Um, uh, a couple of these you've already partially answered, but let me ask you this one. What surprised you about the play once you started working on it? So you had certain assumptions that you had about the play, having read it and agreed to do it, worked on, uh, uh, did the auditions, began to get to know the material, but once you were in the rehearsal process, what surprised you about the play once you started to work on it? How emotionally affected I would be. Mm -hmm. you know, I, mean, I, would have, I thought I had certain things under uh, control, uh, you know, that, you know, you would work, let out, you know, work on like mental, mental health is a really big thing. And I suggest, you know, if you feel like you need to talk to someone, please do, I do promote it. And um, so, you know, I, I go to therapy myself and, you know, I was working on things. That I don't think I could have done this play without first being through that process and self-healing, you know, through past traumas and all of that. But uh, you just going through the play and then being affected by certain things and not even necessarily that my character was saying or doing, but by the other characters. And it was like, oh, what is that? What am I feeling? Like, oh my gosh, like, you know, there was, there was days like where I was like, oh, like I said, I needed to take a break. And like Logan, uh, Logan Vaughn would be like, oh, hey, is everybody safe? Like, let's do what we have to do to make sure everybody's good and then we can come back and get back to it. So I'll say that personally for myself. Mm -hmm. I think what surprised me was the journey of the, uh, I don't want to give everything away, but there's the, the magical stuff that happens. Um, I, I, I think I didn't really understand what they were. I just thought they were cool. 
Mm-hmm. And, and then when the more we did it, I was like, how's this going to work? You know, <laughs> but, um, but that was once I, I understood it and what it, it meant and what it was, um, how we're all, you know, haunted as uh, from our past. And once I understood it, how, and how, uh, just even thinking about the objects in the, the house and, you know, we all do object work and stuff. And as a playwright, we write the, the importance of it. But when it all started coming, especially when we got on the set and saw how all that in the design team, once I started seeing how the lighting and the sound and all that, that was like, it really was, was just electrifying really when it all came together. Um, so it was really surprising to see how all that connected and, um, and it just, yeah, you just, just wanted to be in that world, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think in playing it. Oh, sorry, Sola, go. You know, I, I think in playing it, I think we were able to um, get more of a grasp on the terror that the home represents. And I think that, um, uh, yeah, just uh, technically, I think we were able to bring out something because it's like, it's something that cinematically would be like in the horror genre. And I think it's something that like in on theater, we were able to convey this like, terror of these memories in these tableaus that represent this like really and it's not like oh monsters under the bed but like monsters on top of the bed which is even worse but like you know really traumatic stuff and that's you know I I think about the um the explanation or the description a lot and the thing that is the word that is used is unflinching and I think that's something that I was like oh this play really doesn't let go it's unflinching yeah. yeah. Well, t- can you all talk a little, uh, there was a question in, in the vein of this, yeah. since you, you referenced it, um, uh, both Marsha and Sola, could you talk a little bit about the, um, the spells and how the spells evolved during the process of rehearsing the play? Because they, they definitely, the, I could tell your point of, the, the overall point of view on them change throughout the process from the rehearsal room to mm-hmm. through the tech process through the preview process could you talk a little bit about how the spells worked and what they represented for you and then and then also how they evolved uh during the process i, w- I would say they were made possible through the grace and mercy of our fearless leader logan vaughn first of all like i just i mean because i think both, I mean, just I think her and Stacy's communication in terms of what they meant and who they were for was so mm-hmm. specific coming in early on for us in the process so that we were able to like just jump in with this idea that they would be in Denise's world. They would be a part of her trauma as like a vicarious, you know, um, survivor or, or a victim, or, you know, who knows where she is in her, um, in her journey. But um yeah, just starting there and then feeling through them, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's what it, that, that, that's, that's just what it started out for me. It's just Logan saying, this is what it starts, this is what it means. And then going deeper, deep, deeper from there. I, I have to also add, I think uh, Logan also understood what the, the physical language of those, those spells look mm-hmm. like. So that they, we're not just, you know, uh, oh, the weather or the electricity is happening and then all of a sudden something happens. They're all connected to um, something that's happening to us, within us, that's just being exhibited in our world. And I think then, you know, if I stay my lane as an actor, it's like, okay, great, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, and I think <laughs> Logan uh, took on that charge. Same thing with Stacey. I think there's some things that we found as we were going through the rehearsal process, like, wait, why is this happening here? And why, what are we like really struggling with whose perspective is it? And mm-hmm. I think they, they took a lot of that labor on for us to understand how to move through that. Because then Alfonso and I were like, wait, can they see us? Can they not see us? What's happening? Are we blocking? Yeah. Who should we listen to? Like, we just had to figure that stuff out and it takes time. It just takes time. You can't get in there and just um, have an idea and think that it's going to uh, uh, solve a problem. You have to try it. And I think Logan and Stacy were willing to try things that, you know, we didn't even understand what was happening sometimes. We're like, okay, that's fine. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, some, yeah, I would say sometimes I, I was more technical for me because I, I was I was just doing what I, I didn't understand it yet. And then when I did, though, I know when um, there was a layer where we're like, when, when is this in the past? What is real? What is what is a what is the understanding of a six year old? Or is this really happening? Is this non consensual or whatever? Mm -hmm. I, was, I was able mm -hmm. to explore that. And, um, and so with, with Logan, like guiding us, like almost like just technically first and then layering on, you hear her or what's gonna happen if this, you know, if you're caught or whatever. So um, it, it then it began, we, I, I feel like then I understood more and, 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 and I think I was allowed to like, I kind of forgot about the audience and just was, like where where is Barbara in this, and where is her relationship to her her sister? And so that once I was able to hang on to something, then I would you know. But I I didn't know how it was gonna look, you know. I was like, how's this gonna work, you know? And uh, of course, it was it's amazing. <laughs> that, that's great. Um, so uh, um, talk a little bit, if you will, about. I'm torn because I have questions I still want to ask, but no, I will ask the questions that came in from Facebook. So, so could you talk a little bit about the ending is which is one of the questions that came in. One of the things that I love, I love, 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 love is, and I asked Stacy about this, is uh, in the writing when um, uh, the story needs to be about the sisters and the men just, walk off stage. And I said this to, to Stacy. you could have taken the, in a very short amount of exposition, three, four lines, you could have justified them leaving. You could have advanced time. There's different ways you could have done it, but she chose instead to take a hard break. Logan embraced that, you all embraced that. You all just walked off the stage and not through the, the actual door, letting the, the accumulation of the spells and the accumulation of abstraction to allow for a moment like that. And I love that moment. I love it. I love, I love uh, get just really coming down to, and not saying the men aren't important, but saying what the story needs right now are these women and for them to advance with their journey together. And I found that beautiful and challenging and gorgeous. Talk from there, uh, and I'm going to really lean on you, Marsha and Scola, through the end of the play, um, because that's the area where I think, feel like there's the most uh, um, emotional complexity and also storytelling complexity um, through to the end of the play. So could you just talk a little bit about the end, uh, both the green bean snap and scene um, through to uh, the moment when you all are, take that final breath at the door? Um, I think what this story does so well is she explores the gray in life events and we're all raised what's right and what's wrong, right? We know black and white, what, what, but what this story does is keeps putting that gray area in your face. And so I remember even auditioning and reading the uh, end uh, monologue and just being so moved by it uh, every every time I read it, you know, and 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 how I, I think about how we relate as humans, and that we have there's an opportunity that I can be real with you, and if you think just think about events and how we treat each other and things that have happened, and how there's like this moment where time falls away, everything falls away, and you can speak your truth, and we miss it. Right, we miss it because we're scared, or we miss it, and so I feel like at the end, because of everything that has happened between them, that has really just torn them apart. I mean, they don't know how to be sisters, you know. And I think, and and as uh, Alfonso said about words and and how words, you know, oh, I said this a long time ago to cut you. You know, but how that just builds. And one of the things Logan always pointed out, there's residue on you from that other thing that happened. There's residue. 
all each one of you, it's, it didn't go away. You, you know, you've got to come back, but it's still living inside of you. And I think with, with because Denise has been away, I think it affects her differently than Barbara because Barbara's been sitting in it. It's like her, she's so used to it. She thinks that's what normal life is, you know? And so when the arrival of Denise is so hilarious because they're like going at it. Like I remember Logan saying, she, they're brutal. Don't hold back. That's how they, that's how they relate. And it's funny. And then the next moment they're laughing and singing, but you know, that's how they relate. So when the end comes, I just feel, I felt like it just lifted off the page and it was like, they're her only chance. And I love how the, 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 the power dynamic changes between the sisters and maybe it was always that way, but you know, Robert's need to control and everything. Uh, but yeah, I, I, that, that ending was like this, this moment in time to really tell your truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think from the moment um, Denise knocked on the door, something was bound to happen just with it being on that, you know, just with the destiny of just the play that Stacey, that, that, that Stacey wrote, that something big was bound to happen. And like, it kept on kind of getting delayed in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. It was like, we, and we tried to do all of these things to get out of it. We tried to play game, we tried to play game, we tried to eat it away, we tried to play it away, we tried to do all of these things out of it. We tried to sleep it away. And like, we really got, and you know, we talked about it, um, um, Marsha had talked about like, you know, not not to get parts away, but like how she was literally going from station to station because she was, you know, just just through the things that she went through in yeah. the play. And you know, we we try to do all these things to cope through and deflect from what deflect. really is there. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. we finally have to do what we have to do at the end. And it's such a it's such a big gesture, but it's something that's so deserved because, um, especially like Marsha said, because the truth like that comes out that's so, I don't, I don't know, you know, what truth can be more hurtful when you talk about, and then when you think about a structure, like it coming out in that structure, the only thing that you can do is what was done. So um, yeah, I think it was just, we were pushed to the limit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's so masterfully done, like the story, when we tell stories and, and how she captures the child's view of an event and how wonderful things are and you're watching as a child and then when things are not quite you don't understand what's going on and what we think is love and what means love and and just that um the relationship to the sisters i mean i relate it i mean my sister and i you know i have a sister so sister dynamic is just so interesting. it's interesting it's love and it's it's that we can be brutal. I mean, but no one else can be brutal with my sister. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I can go there. I know all your little, you know, little issues and stuff and, and the same with me. So with her, she can do to me. So I just really feel like she captures that dance. And then it's like, we can't dance anymore. We got to stand still and be, and be truthful, you know? Um, I've got one more Facebook question and then I got, I've got one, one final question for me. I can't help myself. But <laughs> uh, so the, the Facebook question is uh, um, uh, from someone that saw the preview uh, oh. and the stage set seemed to be perfectly designed for the play to a level that you don't find often allowing the house and all its memories to almost be a fifth actor. What are actors' thoughts on that? The play stays with me and the mental image of the set is a big reason. Why is that? That's so can you, can, you talk about, can you talk about the presence of the house, yeah. um, both in the story, but also the, the, the execution of it. Execution, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember Logan mentioning that, you know, that space is tricky, um, and, and, but that, and let me let me be specific by that she meant also diction articulation you know what i mean how you actually move through that space 
um, and just being aware of our physical space uh, in terms of projecting our, our volume. But also, I think what I learned moving through there is there are walls. <laughs> they, they, you know, they, they, there's an outside world. There is an above world. There are things happening underneath you, whether it's the tree, whether it's whatever is happening, the, the environment. So I, I think so much attention was given, like even uh, in Tokoso with the costumes when we, I know Alfonso and I would get snow put on us uh, off stage. So we came in and with the boards, like how far away is the shed and how much snow is outside? Um, there are so many details that the audience, maybe, you know what they might've felt, but they were literally spoken of by the creative team. And I, that's the level of um, care and attention that this play deserved. And I think it got, and I think when I say sad that we don't get to do it more, is that's what I mean. There's so many details, like even on the fridge, every night I'd come up and I'd, I'd read something new on the fridge that Jack put up. I was like, I didn't know that set dressing was there. Okay, what? I would literally go and find things on the set or when we have our fight in the kitchen with Sola, uh, you know, where, where things are, uh, the, the faucet actually works. You know, so I was having like, thoughts like, oh, maybe I can do water and like, <laughs> Those are things that, you know, are luxuries, at least at KC Rep, when you get the chance to rehearse and, and be in front of an audience. But the process of that is amazing. The detail of that set is amazing. The bed, mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yeah. To go for us, yeah, like uh, when we first were uh, rehearsing in, uh, I forget the room name, guys. The cold <laughs> room. It's <laughs> 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 we rehearsed a beautiful team, uh, TJ and Morgan had taped out for, and then like Logan would say like, yeah, this is gonna be, uh, my question is that Logan, that the space is gonna be tricky for us. And then once we came on set and we were in that house, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This is real. And then it's like tight and it's like, that's how, it, this is, it feels like, like, it just brought everything like to a whole nother height, like it, to a whole nother life. Like it was just like, you know, it's like, if you lived in that house, then you know that house, you know where everything is. It's the way that you move. It's like the comfortability. You can kick the door closed with your foot while you're dropping keys and stuff, so, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just how you, you know, compared to if like, if Freddie comes over, Ansa's character, like he's never been here before. So he's gonna explore a little bit more instead of like, no, it's just like, it helped us like bring that story to life. Like that play, yeah. that world is so, oh my God, it's out of this world. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And the house was haunted. I mean, you felt it. Like you felt the design team, the uh, the projection, the 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 branch coming. It, you just felt it come alive. And it wasn't until we were in the space and 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 really after tech that I could go, oh, you know. So and and it's so tight. You know that that house is so tight. And so it's like I always felt like. Is boiling up like we're we're like one minute fighting, next minute doing something else. You know, it's 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 like the house too. You know, mm -hmm. it's just coming alive. Every element of it, from the bedspread to the you know the the jet magazines on the. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think you know the the idea that it was seen as a fifth actor too. You know, I think we were able to feed so much into it. Um, you know, and just manipulated in the ways that we, and you know, that we needed because we had it so early on, like soon after we were up on our feet, we had so much taped out. We had the stuff, we had so much that we moved around what, what, you know, what, what ended up being, uh, the final, uh, you know, the final set. Um, mm -hmm. and it served us so well because as, as specific as we were in the rehearsal process, it just informed yeah. like what each area, what each quadrant, what each prop, what they all meant, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah shout out to Lydia and our, our, our crew, TJ. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they were amazing. Yeah, more than amazing. The whole, yeah, the whole, the whole production team, everyone is, I have never experienced a show where every level of like, every section was just amazing. Everybody came and did what they were supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just they did everyone just did their job and was happy to do it like that's yeah. really amazing and it's like just to you know work with so many other you know all these amazing artists and just get to experience them just from this play alone has brought all these different worlds in together like we all come from these different places 
And that is so amazing. And that's not by mistake that we all got to experience one another. And now we're a family and, you know, mm -hmm. we got to tell this story. You know, right? I, I, I will share one thing that I'm sure the audience might not know or not know. I mean, that set also has to work for Frankenstein, right? Exactly. So Frankenstein is the genius same. design, literally, it has to be a house. And then it has to flip over and be something totally different. So we would come, yeah. The next night. <laughs> we would come in and, and like we, after the table read of Frankenstein, I was like, wait a minute, how are they going to do this? So yeah. part of the, the fun was like being challenged in new work in the way that Casey Rep did it was like, there's going to be two shows <laughs> and it's the same set. So yeah. we had to, like, we didn't even feel Frankenstein when we were in the house, but we could mm -hmm. see like things backstage. But you know, it's also that energy, like things are being created, man. So it mm -hmm. felt really good to come and do some work. Yeah. So my final question, uh, uh, I will be selfish and use the final question. <laughs> which is, I'm always really interested in this and uh, um, Joni Schultz who directed Frankenstein, um, she, this is sort of her, her mantra, uh, which is, um, uh, if, if, um, if you do, if you're approaching a project the right way, you're changed by it, right? That you come out the other side, change somehow if you're doing it right. And, and so assuming we all did this project right, could you share um, how you were changed by it? Whether that's the, the experience of um, uh, the journey of your character, the experience of this ensemble, the experience of going through this and then um, having the the absurd uh, uh, collision with the pandemic and have it canceled. It, share share if you will how you've been changed by the experience of this story and this process. I'll I'll go first. Uh, I can honestly say it it, it just for this to happen the way that it did with everything that's going on it taught me that you know you can't be so i don't want that to come out wrong i want this to be right or like so invested in something where you have to be living the present mm -hmm. enjoy every moment enjoy every moment of something because you never know when it could be stopped or end or when it's done or when it's mm -hmm. over so Honestly, it, it taught me to be more present and to learn to just don't rush for anything. Everything that is supposed to happen will happen. Mm -hmm. And the things that you go through are the things that you're supposed to, and they don't happen by mistake and they don't happen because, oh, I just, oop, that's just supposed to be like this. It was because it was supposed to be like that. Mm -hmm. And just like enjoy those moments and enjoy, enjoy the smells that surround, enjoy the people that you see or the people that are there and it's, and, and because now those are the moments that I look back to now that I'm, I'm, I'm quarantined inside my home by myself, you know, like alone, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Those are the memories that I have to, I, I use to go back with, oh, there are good times and there is hope and that, you know, like, mm -hmm. but like right now we have to be safe about this. So it did, it, it taught me that to be more, more in the present and, and appreciate mm -hmm. the things that we do go through. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief. I think for me, it's don't miss the, don't miss the lesson. I think someone like Freddie exists for a reason uh, to reveal and to show things. Um, I, I don't, I, I'm nothing like Freddie in my personal life, but I, I, I understand those kind of human beings a little bit better. Um, I love my job. I think acting is one of those sacred things that is communal and it needs to happen with people watching and witnessing. And Freddie has a truth that he had to share. Um, because he's also hurting and he's in need of love. And I think ultimately that's what the play um, sits on for me. Uh, and sometimes pain <laughs> can be a version of love, um, but you have to go through some things to understand how to relate to your pain and how to, mm -hmm. how to express your love. Um, so I, that's, that's uh, what I, I took from the little journey that I had so far. Uh, I wanted a lot more. I think Freddie was starting to come into his own because it's about relationships. And uh, I was really looking forward to creating relationships with each of those wonderful human beings and also with you know the world that was created for us. So uh, I want a TV show, a film. <laughs> so uh, let me write that. Uh, but the, the play is phenomenal. I think that's, mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's it. Um, I, I feel like I have been changed um, in terms of actually, because it was already a year before rehearsal started and then another year had started after the year had started for me personally, but um, just for everybody. And so um, like, like Alfonso said about living in the moment, because one of the things like when the, when the thing hit, I was like, the, the thing that kept coming in my mind was like, oh, you think you have time? Because all these things that I kept saying that I was going to do with my cast, with the character, with my everything. Yeah. And it just was like, oh, no, baby, like this is this. You had that. <laughs> and like, I'm I'm glad that I, what we had was so enjoyable. Like, seriously, from the first minute to the last, there's not a there's not a time that like Alfonso was like, I can go back and say I, I had a good time, you know, at least I could take that home to the bank with me because that's all I got, you know, it's not like I could say I had a show, you know, I just, that's all I got. So I'm grateful for that. But um, one thing playing Denise helped me with and just, you know, doing this work helped me with was, um, you know, not allowing achievement to deflect from the healing work that we need to do. Mm. Um, not only because, you know, personally for us, like sometimes it may not happen, you know, like, and not to say that like, whatever, you know, like, but just not to allow the things that surround us distract us from the work that we need to do within us and within our families, because it's really important. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I, I the, on an artistic level, the play changed me and challenged me to be braver um, and to have compassion and empathy. I mean, I, I feel like I'm so compassionate and stuff, but I can, I have blind moments too. And so it really, I felt like instead of, um, I don't know how people are gonna take this, but instead of like seeing Barbara over here, I, I found my inner Barbara. Like, it's like mm -hmm. to be truthful enough to say that there is elements of you that are very much like Barbara. And that the, the one thing I do is I never judge my character. So if there are things that she's doing that I'm like, you know, like I would never do that, you know, or whatever. I, but, but the more I delved into it, I, I was like, wow, uh, yeah, there's some similarities here. <laughs> so, you have to, so artistically, I had to, you know, embrace that and go for the ride and learn that, you know, I know you want to be right and perfect and all that, but I think this moment when all of this happened, first of all, I was in a bubble with the six days rehearsal, you know, I wasn't really paying attention to COVID. I mean, I knew about it, but I wasn't, I didn't think it was that bad until I think yeah. with the NCAA, you know, when they um, canceled or didn't let the fans in, I was like, hmm, that's peculiar, but we're still going to have our show. <laughs> but, yeah. but, uh, but I, yeah, it was taking me a moment to really accept it. And then realizing like everyone said, like, we're not going to hang out. This was like when we're going to do the work and, and then hang out and relax. And um, when that wasn't gonna happen, but then being so grateful and appreciative that I, my husband did see the show. He was you know, mm -hmm. able to spend some time and then you go home and just think about, I need to be safe. I need to make sure my family's safe. What is important in the world? And, and how now that we're, you know, we're quarantined and how we can't, those hugs that we had are so important, you know, the, that yeah. connection that we used to be able to touch people and now we can't, yeah. now it's really, you know, you're really taking that to heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I could spend all evening with all of you all. It's so <laughs> nice to see mm. all of you um, and to hear your voices and to hear you reflect on this play and also your experience with one another, it's really moving and really meaningful. So um, I wanna say thanks first for um, your incredible artistry and what you all gave of yourself through that process. And um, we were all heartbroken when the run of the show was cut short, but feel also really fortunate that we're one of the rare companies that we did get, we did get um, a video of it. And mm -hmm. the quality was such that people are still being moved by the story. And they've got one more day to do it if they want to do it. 
uh, if they haven't yet, um, they, they can stream uh, through our website, kcrep.org, through tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to watch it tomorrow. If you buy it tonight, you got to watch it by tomorrow. <laughs> After that, it, it, the streaming is, is over. Um, uh, so I just want to make a, a pitch for anyone that hasn't seen it uh, um, to take advantage of that tonight or tomorrow. Um, Stuart, can I just also say yeah, a please. thank you to you? Because yes. I think the speech that you gave at the end from the moment that you knew we were not going to have the run when you came up to that room in uh, uh is it uh uh h and r block and and spoke to us individually in terms of you know what was going to be happening and uh, things were changing and we did not really know and to the point where we had one show and you give that speech and all that and i think you know this is the time in 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 history when we're going to remember that we we'll remember how we handled it, not necessarily, yeah. oh man, we made it. It's how we behave in those moments that's gonna define us. And I yeah. think be able to have the courage and obviously the, the ability to speak truth in letting us perform that one night mm -hmm. will be remembered in history. So for me, mm -hmm. as sad as it is, mm -hmm. I remember that moment. I remember the speech. I remember being able to do the show. I remember seeing everybody in the lobby afterwards. Hey, happy opening, happy closing, close opening, ha ha ha. Mm -hmm. I remember that, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I have to say thank you to you and Casey Brett for making that happen. I know things were out of your control, but as many things as could be done, you did. Yeah. So I appreciate that. And Logan and yeah. Casey above, above all too. So that's so generous of you. I, I that is really meaningful, and I'm very generous of you. Hey, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. No. We we <laughs> we. we, we we, I said this earlier when we first got on, like, you know, um, we're all learning about ourselves in, in a moment mm -hmm. like this as well, you know, and it, it's an opportunity, um, despite how painful this moment is and difficult and the fact that we are all going to lose people that are close to us. Mm -hmm. It's also an opportunity to, to really focus on what's important and to mm -hmm. really reevaluate where we want to put our time and where we want to put our energy and where we want to put our love. And, um, and so uh, despite how hard this is, uh, I also think this is an opportunity for all of us to do that work and, and to refresh what's yeah. really important in our lives and in our art. And mm -hmm. um, so I feel really grateful to all of you all for making this time to continue to share what you shared through your acting work and through your artistry on the stage and then through the streaming, but then to further generously give to Casey Rep audiences and to me more perspective on your process and more perspective on your art making and why you do the work that you're doing. Um, so thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, uh, for making the time to have this conversation tonight and to continue to have a dialogue with our audiences here. Um, miss you all. Thank you. you. Yeah, Thanks for making it happen. Stacey Rose, can I say, can we get one picture? And they're out there. One, Stacey, I think Stacey Rose, and, Stacey Rose and Logan are out there. So love hey, to see you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs>